coffee. Coffee no! We plan to discuss Syria today. And while we appreciate China's support for a political solution, the only solution we believe is, is ultimately available and possible, we do have differences between our nations and have disagreed sharply over how the international community should respond to the Syrian regime's use of chemical weapons. With negotiations ongoing at the Security Council, we look forward to China playing a positive, constructive, important role. China's Navy marked its 60th anniversary today with a big show of its newest warships and weaponry off the eastern coast of Qingdao. Headlining the naval parade of Chinese and foreign vessels, including the U.S. Navy missile destroyer, the USS Fitzgerald, were four Chinese submarines, two of them nuclear and never seen before in public. I think a big step for the Chinese in terms of uh, displaying their nuclear submarine force to an international audience. But with expanding military might comes a more assertive stance. Our economy is growing. We should have a navy that corresponds to our size. And concern. It's important as the Chinese navy grows, that again, that we discuss that, we interact, and we understand what each other's intentions are and what their goals and ambitions are. In December, China began taking part in anti-piracy operations off the coast of Somalia, the farthest its naval ships have ever traveled. Last month, Chinese vessels harassed an American surveillance ship in the South China Sea, claiming the ship, the Impeccable, was conducting illegal surveillance activities in its territory. And speculation runs high that the Chinese People's Liberation Army, or PLA, is building an aircraft carrier, heightening concerns about China's military objectives. I believe that uh, if an aircraft carrier is introduced by the PLA Navy, it doesn't change the balance uh, significantly. The real issue is uh, what is the purpose of the aircraft carrier. But China says its aims are purely defensive. The goal of developing our Navy is to protect our maritime rights, survival and development rights. This is no threat to anyone. These anniversary celebrations are being billed as the Naval Olympics. It's all part of China's effort to reassure the world that its military intentions are friendly and transparent. In another rare gesture of openness, sailors from China, the U.S., and other countries exchange visits to one another's naval ships. But for some, it's not quite enough yet. It's because they're very uh, open in showing the ships. It does not mean that you know how they want to operate, how they're going to spend the next defense budget, of course, and uh, how, how large it is going to be. Maintaining pressure on the Chinese that they will be above board with their military designs. Adrian Mong, NBC News, Qingdao, China. Professor Xia has been an outspoken critic of China's ruling Communist Party. He shows me a letter signed by over a hundred American academics protesting against what they call a politically motivated move to silence him. The major reason is for the past few years I uh, have uh, kept uh, criticizing the government and the party and I always promote uh, constitutional democracy, rule of law, and the freedom of speech, freedom of publication, freedom of assembly, all those things. I don't think that I do anything wrong. Professor Xiao's sacking comes as other critics are being targeted by the state. One of China's most popular bloggers, arrested, made to appear on state TV, apparently under pressure, he praises a government crackdown on the internet. In the staged interview, he says online criticism of the government can lead to social chaos. Despite censorship, the Internet poses a threat to the state. With half a billion people now online, the numbers rising thanks to cheap smartphones. More and more people are able to share views, ideas, opinions with just a few taps of their phone. The government's old monopoly on information is well and truly broken. An emerging opposition is increasingly being seen and heard. The greatest fear of China's leaders, the power of social media to bring people onto the streets, as it did last year at this demonstration against a chemical plant in eastern China.
In a video smuggled out of prison, a jailed lawyer calls for people to stand up and speak out. The authorities say they have to take action against what they call illegal rumors. Professor Xia says China's leaders are treating criticism as a crime. Angus Walker, ITV News, Beijing.